Hey y'all, it's time for a review. Uh, from an unexpected place as well. You uh, might think the uh, Remington Company. Wonderful history of providing high quality firearms to much of the nation. Well, they also do knives. We're here to see what the Remington pocket saw will do. So this thing is nowhere near the size you would expect it to be for most bushcraft and sportsman needs. This is a pocket saw of seemingly minuscule size. It's got a similar profile to my favorite Scandi pocket knife, the Finn Wolf from Cold Steel. And I wonder if these two items <clears throat> together would make a really, really good, there we go, combination pair. So it's really thick metal, more than you would expect it to be. Um, it's got a liner lock, so you have to press in to make it come down. Um, it does, however, have a safety notch or safety pin that keeps it from, like once you've got it unlocked, it'll actually keep it from freely going down until you press past that. So that's a very good safety feature. Um, knives that don't have that will just keep going down on your fingers. So that's good. It's got some aggressive teeth. See if we can get a close up. Um, it's got some, some aggressive teeth. It has what you would expect a, a, uh, kerf allowance, I guess would be the, uh, the name but it's a, a thinner at the top than it is at the bottom. And the point is, is, is clear for that kind of a thing. So we're going to start off with some basic wood from the garage. And we're going to see how it cuts. Come on down with me. First, let's take a look at some... Uh, saws that we are familiar with. Most of us know about the old faithful Corona saw. And this one has seen some work. All right, so this one, let's compare thicknesses first of all. This one About twice as thick. So this saw, the sportsman saw, is twice as thick as this one. Now this one clearly has a purpose for pulling. Push the push cut is the uh, is the debris cut. So maybe not so with this one. All right. Let's take a look at this one. Now this is a generic that I bought off of uh, the internet and I thought it was pretty cool. It has wooden everything and all that kind of thing. You know, Japanese Hachiemon type thinking. It is also thicker. About three, three to four times thicker than this saw. Again, there's a reason for the pull cut and Japanese like their pull cuts. Now feeling it, I'm going to feel it here. Noticing the dis difference between where the teeth bottom out or, or the, the, if you look at it this way, there's, there's valleys and mountains where the valleys ba uh, bottom out and go, you know, make it to where 
full metal. The, the transition really isn't one. And you've got understanding here that it, it's thinner at the top than it is at the bottom, but you really don't feel it. This one, I don't know if you've noticed here, doesn't have that. So what happens is when you put pull your finger across here like this lightly, you can feel that the teeth themselves are, are thicker than the rest of the blade. And again, that's curve allowance. Um, so I wonder if those are the differences there. Now this is clearly a uh, difference in teeth, uh, teeth, you know, mountain to valley distance. Same here. I think the Corona Sol's got the most aggressive so far, so we'll keep that one out. Put this one back. All wood. It's a little bit of a novelty, but I like it. All right, let's go to the uh, good old Open L. Haven't used this one as much as I'd like. Here we go. Now this one is has the same orientation or configuration for curve allowance as the uh, the wooden handled one. It's thicker by the by the blades, and um, there's no uh, what I would call reverse flat grind, I guess, because it doesn't actually go into an edge. So what we've got here are and the, this one's about the same. And I do believe I see a slight curve allowance for that one in the grind of the blade. So we've got wide blade, no back grind, back grind, no, or, or thick, where the, the teeth thickness is thicker. Teeth thickness is the same. So as far as kerf allowance, our buddy here is very much like the Corona saw. For teeth, it's even smaller than the Open L. Uh, not by much, a little bit, but uh, enough to say that there is one. So here's what we'll do. I'll put you away for a second. I'll put you away for a second. Now let's look at the uh, uh, action here. With it being such a thick blade, I wonder if that isn't going to happen. Okay, that one's good. That one caught. So that's one of the it's a common common catch is that little catch right in there. Now I have an angle, I have a bent, a bend there, which probably won't happen with the thicker blade. So that's interesting too. All right, we're gonna go in between these uh, posts here. So I'm gonna bring you even down further and we'll um, go from there on some cutting. Here we go. I'm going to brace here. Or actually, I'm going to brace this way. And we're going to cut off on this side right there. Let's adjust. Whoa, not that. Right there. Here we go. All right. Cutting here.
Now the fact that it was um, smaller in length uh, got me a few times, but take a look at that. Easy keel compared to the other saw. This is the other end of it. I think this was my Corona saw I did this cut. Here, let's take a look at the two. There we go. About the same. One's a little bit weathered. All right. I'm going to get this wood here. If you know what it is, tell me in the comments. I think it's a popular one and a really good one to, to judge saw capability. All right, now, readjust. Okay. Well, I'm going to do the small end. So, put this in here like that. See what I can do with it. It's definitely a push saw. Hmm. It's a very dead wood. And if you if you know what kind of wood this is, you know why it's difficult for me to do this. Here, let's do it this way. Goodness! Got an idea. Let's see how the open L works. Use the same hole. Ah, better. See how the Corona saw is working. All right, open L. Don't fall on me. Wow. Okay, so. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you could tell. There we go. Can't really tell whether the different saw makes saws made their cut. But one thing is for sure. Come on, buddy. Yeah, that's better. So looking at the way the different saws are working, this one clearly is a backup. Um it did not cut as well as I expected it to be to cut. It cut less good than this aggressive saw and less aggressive than our old open -o. open -o. Corona. Um, and that makes sense. So you've got a different aggression with the teeth. So this one's not going to cut as fast. Now they market it as a bone saw. What bone do you think you're going to be sawing through this, with this? Not very many. Small. And if you got small bones, you can break them. So that's, uh, that's not very good. Um, I would suggest Remington do everything else. Workmanship is really good. Lockup. Um, materials. All of this stuff is really, really high quality. But I wonder if they choose to bring those valleys, there you go, bring those valleys further down to create a more aggressive stall, um, that this wouldn't be a bushcrafter's friend. Um, now, I said before that you could 
put these two in your pocket and you've got a good set. Uh, much like putting this one and this in your pocket, you've got a good set. Um, but then I go back to an original that's been around for years and years and years. And something I think is uh, easily under, underestimated. The farmer. So, you got your blade. You've got your saw. About the same as far as valley depth. Um, you've got a lot more strength here because let's see if I can. There you go. It's about this blade's thickness is about three quarters this blade. So it's still thicker. Still thicker. Um, but with this item, in this size, you get this item and this item. And in all, bottle opener, can opener, wire stripper. Bottle opener, large screwdriver, wire stripper, can opener, small screwdriver. In a size smaller than either one of those two by themselves. Okay. So, um, if you're thinking about this saw, uh, I would say go ahead and get it. It's cheap. It's not expensive. This would be a pocket saw version of the Mora without so much effort put into its research and development. So the Mora knife, everyone loves the Mora knife. I love the Mora knife. I've got six, five, seven, I don't know. Um, and people love it because it's inexpensive, but also a lot of thought was put into its research and development so that you've got the right angles of the blade, the blade angle, the grind cut, everything. Um, the only thing missing is the aggr teeth aggression. That's it. And this thing that would be, I don't know, I can't have the price with me on right now, but I want to say $15, $20. So about the, the, the cost of a Mora with that extra grind cut would be on par with its usefulness in a bushcraft situation with a Mora. I love this thing. I do like this thing. Uh, I'm st still going to Corona my way out of things, but um, that's beside the point. Um, so there you go. There you have it. Hope this uh, video finds you well. Hope you are spending time outdoors. I hope that um, you find new opportunities to spend time outdoors because um, uh, there's so much to be gained from our natural environment that uh, mm, lots of people underestimate that too. Anyway, guys, be good. Get lost.